Hello everyone. Uh, so the purpose of this video is going to be um, um, for me to solve some of the review problems on the review assignment that I gave you so that you can go through and check your solutions but actually have an explanation of how to do it so that you can prepare for the test that's coming at the end of the week. So let's get started with number one. I've already got it on the board here. Um, the instructions tell us that we need to solve all the different all the missing parts of the triangle so in this triangle i've listed the missing parts we're missing the side length of ac which is the hypotenuse we're also missing angle a and angle c so we're going to need to be able to solve all three of those parts now remember we've got three methods to solve well technically four um, if we're trying to solve a side length we've got the pythagorean theorem we've got uh, special rate triangles 30 60 90 and 45 45 90 and then we've also got sine cosine and tangent um, and in in order to solve angles we'll talk about that in just a little bit so as you look at this triangle the first thing I notice is that I know two of the sides of the triangle already and so that's a, a clue to me that I can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for the third side we'll call that side X for the moment so um, I'm going to plug these into Pythagorean theorem using x as the hypotenuse. So that means the 3 and the 7 are the legs. So that would be 3 squared plus 7 squared is going to be equal to x squared. So that would be 9 and 7 squared would be 49. So that's going to be equal to x squared. Add 9 and 49 together and you'll get 58 is equal to x squared. And then in order to get x alone, you would need to square root both sides. So we find that x would come out to be the square root of 58. Now, in class, I told you that would be an 80% answer right there. Square root of 58 would get you 80% of the credit. <clears throat> now, if you want 100% of the credit, you need to check and see, can 58 be simplified at all? So as you think about, you know, what, what, two numbers can 58 be um, multiplied, or what two numbers multiplied could make 58? It comes out to just be uh, 2 times 29. And 29 can't be broken up anymore, that's a prime number. Neither one of these two numbers are easily square rootable. So actually, square root 58 is the 100% answer because it can't be simplified any more than it already is. All right, so that got us our um, side lengths that we were missing. Now let's work on getting those missing angles. All right, so um, we learned in class that really there's only one thing you can do when you're missing an angle, especially if you're missing two angles, and that is the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent. So you can actually pick whichever angle you want to to solve first. I'm going to pick angle A to solve first. So just going to put a variable there y so in order to solve an angle you're going to need to um, create a ratio of two sides of the triangle and really you can pick whatever sides you want to you just need to pick the right trig ratio to match the sides that you choose so for me as I'm looking at angle a I can see that the side that's um, opposite from angle a is 7 and the side that is adjacent to angle A is 3. And I'd rather work with 7 and 3 than work with the square root of 58. So I'm going to use the 7 and the 3. That's the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And if you remember from what we learned in class, we learned this little mnemonic device. Tangent is the one that uses the opposite side and the adjacent side. So I would start by saying, well, I know that the tangent of whatever angle A is would be equal to the opposite side, 7, over the adjacent side, 3. But I can't use normal tangent because normal tangent is only possible to use when you actually know the measure of the angle. So since I don't know the measure of the angle, I'm going to shift this into tangent inverse. And instead of plugging the angle in to the, to the tangent inverse function, I'm going to plug the ratio in. And it's actually going to tell me what that angle is. And just to keep things consistent here, 
I'll go back and I'll put that variable that I have there, y. So then here's where you'd want to get your calculator out. <clears throat> Do tangent inverse of 7 divided by 3 and press equals. The calculator tells us that y, or angle A in this case, is going to be equal to 66.8 degrees. And we'll always round those off to one decimal place. All right, 66.8 degrees. Now, once we know that angle A is 66.8 degrees, solving angle C is easy. We just add these two up and subtract it from 180. So 90 plus 66.8, and then do 180, subtract that amount. And that comes out to be 23.2 degrees. All right, so there's your three answers for question number one. All right, we're going to move on to the next few examples. I'm going to pause the video so that I can reset my board here, and then, uh, and then we'll continue. All right, now on to number two. Now, as you look at number two, you might notice um, that an angle is given. One of the acute angles is given. Only one of the sides is given, and we're missing two of the sides. So right away, you should know Pythagorean theorem is probably not going to work out here. Um, because we have an angle given, this could be a special right triangle situation, or this could be a sine cosine tangent situation. So specifically, you just have to look at the angle and see, is it one of the special angles? Is it a 30 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, or a 60 degree angle? So in this case, we do have a special right triangle. It's a 45 degree angle. Now, right off the bat, we can solve for the other acute angle in this triangle by just using the 180 degree relationship of all three triangles. So subtract 180 minus the 90 degrees minus the 45 degrees. We can very quickly solve that the measure of angle F is also 45 degrees. And so now we see this is a 45-45-90 triangle. In a 45-45-90 triangle, we should know that the leg on one, or one of the legs is equal to the other legs. The two legs are equal to each other. So we know if we solve one of these two, we've got the other one solved. So what we learned in class was that there was a simple relationship between the hypotenuse of a 45-45-90 and the leg, and the relationship was this. Whatever the leg value was multiplied by the square root of two would give you the hypotenuse value. So we can actually plug what we know in. I'm gonna label this leg as x, just so that we have a variable to work with. So the leg, which is x, times the square root of two has to equal the hypotenuse length, which is four. Then we solve for x by dividing the square root of 2 over to the other side. Now, this is an 80% answer. We talked about this in class. In order to get the full credit answer, the 100% answer, you're going to have to take this fraction, and you're going to have to rationalize the denominator. Make the denominator have no root in it anymore. And so in class, we talked about how we can do this by simply multiplying whatever root you have on the bottom, just multiply by that root on the top and the bottom. So on the top, you would get 4 times the square root of 2. On the bottom, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. The square roots would actually cancel, leaving you with a 2. And in this case, those cancel out as well. Or, sorry, the, the 4 and the 2 cancel out as well. 4 divided by 2 would just be 2. So we actually get a nice simple answer. Um, Fg would be 2 square root 2. And then since we said the legs are the same as, as well, Hg would be 2 square root 2. All right, that brings us to the conclusion of number 2. Let's move on to number 3. Right away on number 3, you should be asking yourself, you know, what information do I know? Because that will help you decide whether you'll use Pythagorean theorem or sine cosine tangent, or um, the special right triangle. So once again here, we only know one of the sides of the triangle. We don't know another one, so Pythagorean theorem is out. We do know one of the angles inside, so we just have to decide is that a special angle or not. And in this case, it is a 60 degree angle. That is a special angle. So if we use this angle and the 90 degrees to solve angle R, we would do 180, subtract the 90, and subtract the 60. 
and we would find out that angle R, measure of angle R, is 30 degrees. So right away we can see this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and we should be able to use our special ratios to solve this. No calculator necessary, and, and not even a lot of calculation. So the first thing, hopefully, that you remember is, is that there is a short leg and a long leg in this scenario. So um, just by visuals, but also by looking at the angles, the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. So this would have to be the short leg. 90 degrees is obviously the biggest angle, and so that's the hypotenuse. And then across from that, across from the 60 then, would be the long leg. All right. So we'll call the long leg X in this case, and we'll call the hypotenuse Y. All right. So let's solve for the hypotenuse first. We learned that the short leg multiplied by 2 will always give you the hypotenuse. So that's pretty simple. Just 8 times 2 gives us the length of the hypotenuse. So RT is 16. We also learned in class that the short leg has a relationship with the long leg. The short leg multiplied by the square root of 3 will give you the long leg. So actually, I didn't even need these variables because it's so easy to calculate. 8 times the square root of 3 will be the long leg. So RS would be 8 times the square root of 3. And that's it. There's no other calculations we have to do. We don't have to get decimal approximations for these. Um, we're done. That's it. Let's move on to number four. On number four, you'll notice that all three side lengths are given, so we don't have to solve for any side lengths. It is a right triangle. So in this case, all we have to do is solve for the two acute angles. Um, so once again, any time that you're missing the angles in a right triangle, we always do the same thing. We go right to inverse trig functions. So I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to do uh, angle Q first. So I'm just going to put an X there. And again, I can choose any two sides I want to, as long as I put them in the right uh, position in the ratio and I choose the right um, trig ratio. So I'm once again going to use the 12 and the 5 just because I, I think that's pretty easy. So looking at angle Q, the 12 would be the opposite side. The 5 would be the adjacent side. And once again, opposite and adjacent, that is used in the tangent ratio. So normally we would say, you know, tangent of the angle, the angle we don't know, is equal to the opposite side, 12, over the adjacent side, 5. But because we don't know the angle, we have to then switch this over to tangent inverse instead. And instead of putting the angle inside tangent inverse, we put the ratio inside. So use your calculator then to evaluate tangent inverse of 12 over 5. It comes out to be 67, approximately 67.4 degrees. So that gives us measure of angle Q. And then once again, use the 180 degree relationship. So 180, subtract the 90 degree angle, and subtract the 67.4 degree angle, leaving us with measure of angle R as 22.6 degrees. Now, we can get number four.